in Texas, there will be a primary on March the 1st of 2016. So get ready for that. I was just looking today at a poll of Texan, uh, registered Republican, you know, voters. And anyways, so they, they're saying senator over governor. They went with uh, 20% Cruz, the current senator, one of two, of Texas. And 12% support for... Rick Perry, uh, the uh, Texas governor who just exited office. I mean, just exited. And he was governor of Texas for, well, he was the longest serving governor. Um, I think it was, I don't know if it was 13, 14, or 15 years, people. But it was in the low teens, which is a long time to be a governor of a state. But I will tell you one thing. It helps if there is uh, a revolution in technologies relating to crude oil extraction. You you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? With the old uh, oil in in Texas and uh, the the shale thing. And, uh, oh yeah, you know, if you want to claim, hey, I created more jobs than anybody, did you do it? Or was it, I don't know, maybe that ocean of black, sticky liquid that's just kind of oozing, you know, uh, hundreds of feet below the surface of the ground. Because don't get me wrong, one human, a man, a woman... Caitlyn Jenner can be immensely powerful and they can change millions of minds or they can part the waters like, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's not proven, but they can uh, do amazing things. But a, ch- a boatload or a tanker load of dead dinosaurs I I think that that wins out. That wins out. At least in terms of combustibility, right? So, we can put that matter to bed. In any case, uh that's what's going on between those two guys in Texas, but it, it Texas this time around is going to uh have more influence than than uh, than otherwise. Because here we have two prominent Texans, but they're both considered underdogs, at least by me and by pundits huh, and by, you know, voters who are polled. That would be the factual demographic there. But I would argue that, you know, they're in the top two spots. And it looks likely that one of them is going to take the prize as far as the Texas primary. So that's that's going to be a little bit of a curveball uh, in the election cycle. So look out for that. Um, I really, I just don't know what to say about either one of those guys at this point. You know, um, Rick Perry, it's like I've said before. On uh, podcast episode two, Rick Perry is is George W. Bush 0.5. And I, I still maintain that that he, he's just he's not that big of a deal. He's not a big enough deal to uh, comment any further than that. Ted Cruz it, it is uh, I'm inclined. Which is a, a politician phrase, by the way. That oh, I'm inclined to support the bill. I'm inclined to um, describe Ted Cruz as interesting, an interesting 
guy in politics and uh, a different, um, even historic type of senator. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's in reference to his policy ideas and kind of the new uh, platform that he's carving out that's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's more, I mean, it's way less government than even quote conservative Republicans that are anyways, uh, listen, like his, his policy stuff, it would be interesting. It would be, um, I just cannot get over Ted Cruz's just his mannerisms, his way of expressing his inner cruiseness. Um, it, it's just it's very distracting. It's very distracting. I know he worked in this Supreme Court office, some kind of a clerk or something, and and so I know he was he's been around a lot of smart people, but he he talks like. Um, I mean, he just uses these, these huge words and, uh, it's like, Hey, are you a gunslinging Texas cowboy or, or are you Dr. Seuss? You know, just making up words. Um, they're words that like you don't even hear ever unless you're in graduate school in law and it's just some professor who says them. So, so they, they literally sound like. They're from a Dr. Seuss book. He'll just throw them in to places. And, you know, anyways, so that's going to be a speed bump for me to kind of get to know Ted Cruz. It is like, what's, uh, I don't know. Maybe like people said that Mitt Romney was some kind of an alien because. He, he was kind of an awkward human, just a normal human, being able to relate to people. Um, but maybe Ted Cruz is an alien. Um, just, I mean, maybe, maybe, or, or, you know, I don't have any, 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 uh, any real evidence of that at this point. But there's no evidence that, that aliens don't exist. Show me that evidence, all right? There's evidence that life um, can be created in the universe. I mean, just look look at uh, the platypus. Whoa! How did that happen? I thought it was just a bunch of I thought it was just a bunch of asteroids floating around. So if that can happen once. Who's to say it can't twice? Not me. Not here. Not right now, because. Uh, we're moving on. Next on the agenda is, uh, is Jeb Bush. We're going to do a quick update. I'm not going to talk about him because he is very boring. Uh, but we are going to talk about his money because his money talks. Literally. His money is making me talk. His money makes other people talk. Quick fact for the day. Uh, Bush. Jeb Exclamation point, Bush. We'll have amassed more money in six months. That would be from December to uh, now, December of last year to now, than Romney and his allies raised for the entire year before the November 2012 election. Romney being the, the rich, richy rich. And uh, and Bush only took half the time to do it. So, wow, another little fact, just to put that in perspective, because I know you're saying, like, yeah, well, that was 2012. I mean, $100 million in 2012. Nowadays, for elections, that's, you know, you got to spend 400 mil to get anywhere. But to put that in perspective, how much he has raised in six months... I will tell you another little fact that 
that money amounts to twice as much as all of the other 12 GOP candidates combined. So say what you want about Jeb exclamation point Bush's politics. Say what you want about his boring, dull demeanor or his resemblance to uh, W. But he has one striking quality that he's got going for him. Actually, Mitt Romney, none other, was asked about this by the press. And Romney, <laughs> Romney says, by all appearances, he's raised a lot of money. Profound. Profound. And that's coming from a guy with a long career in business. Also, at this stage, that's a very important thing to do. Well... Truer words could not have been spoken, uh, Mr. Romney. So, of course, that's we're asking um, a competition loser about what's important to do to win a competition. So take uh, take Mitt's words with a grain of salt, but of course we are also talking about money in politics, and so. You don't need a grain of salt or Mitt Romney's words to tell you that that's a serious chunk of cash. And my question is, has Jeb, exclamation point, already won the affection of a one NBC channel? Right, okay, NBC, this is like one of those major uh, television channels. I'm just wondering if they they want him to be the nominee. Even if they want Hillary to be president, right? Maybe in order for that to happen, they want some loser nominee who's going to lose the major election. So maybe they want him as prez... Maybe not, but do they want him as the nominee winner? And the reason I ask is because Jeb Bush went on um, Jimmy Fallon's late night show and they actually made Jeb Bush look cool. I can't believe I just said that because who could who could ever do that? I, it, it's really... Uh, an unimaginable feat and it shows you why NBC is the best in the business Uh, but I'm certainly curious uh, why he got that that slots I mean maybe some of these other candidates all they get is an invite onto MSNBC right and then here you have some uh, a guy trying to win over conservative voters and then He's got to talk to Rachel Maddow about it. And that's his only exposure. I mean, that's the only plug that he gets on that channel. But Jeb Bush gets an invite to go on Jimmy Fallon's show. And he gets to jam with none other than The Roots. That's a band. And they're Jimmy Fallon's backing band. Right, and hey, the Roots are cool. Uh, the Roots, they're just a swinging band. I mean, uh, if you haven't listened to them, check them out. But like the the Roots are, like they're 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 good. Not only are they good musically, they're cool. They're hip. Uh people want to be like them. I want to be like them. And instead of Jeb doing some kind of a interview. Or something where there's any chance that he's got to hold his own. Instead, he does this segment, which was like written pretty funny and intelligently. And he he's backed by the roots, and they're like sing, they're singing, they're repeating in song what Jeb says. And Jimmy Fallon's going along with the whole thing, and like we all know Jimmy Fallon is. 
a hilarious guy. Uh, and he's got a, f- a whole funny show over there. And Jeb gets to just ride on the coattails. And so, listen, I, I don't know the answer to that, why he got that slot. But I will say, um, it, it made me like Jeb a little bit. And I had to, like, I had to really, like, examine that feeling that I was having in that moment. It's like, geez, uh, Jeb is, Jeb is funny. But it was because he was in a, it, it was like being, it was like being a guest host on SNL, Saturday Night Live. And you can have, uh, some talentless, um, you know, flavor of the week celebrity even go on there. And they'll, they'll still be funny because everybody around them is so funny. So that is a feather in Jeb Bush's cap. 